Darling social media company is still in the game, I guess. It, it's been playing, and it actually, Sip, has turned into a very good premium selling. You know, they have figured it out where they're not just bleeding money. They have found that zone where they are actually viable. And there are some, like, like people who are committed to being Snapchat users. I know that there's there's still some folks out there who rely on the platform. And I think that's keeping this company going. And hopefully, and I don't know if Snapchat's listening, but hopefully you've got some things going on behind the scenes where you can innovate and reinvent yourself and perhaps, you know, have a resurgence. Uh, I think Snap was the one who made the critical mistake that like Groupon made and all of that where, you had an opportunity to be acquired when you were the unique player on the market. Instead, you decided you had some sort of advantage and realized that there's a lot of programmers out there and all they did was basically recreate what you guys had as your special sauce. You know, so sometimes, you know, from a business perspective, and again, I'm, I'm hoping Snap listens to me, Sometimes you realize that your special sauce is a better, you know, exit strategy for you. Uh, just on a sideline note, we saw another IPO this week, didn't we? I, uh, I Birkenstock. Didn't catch that. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So now we've had what? ARM. They they're a a, a chip manufacturer that is uh, uh, possibly going to be a player in the AI world. They could be. So there's ARM. Then we had um, Instacart. And now we've got Birkenstock. These IPOs are quite um, notable because they're releasing or going public at a time when it's not really an IPO market, right? When bonds are high and stuff, IPOs tend to, the spigot tends to shut off. So it's interesting. And one thing that comes to mind is that when you go IPO, you're actually preparing yourself to be acquired. So you almost wonder if Birkenstock's looking to be acquired by like a Nike or something like that. You're wondering if the ARM is looking to be acquired by like an NVIDIA or something, an Instacart, I'm, I'm not sure, but something to think about uh, w when it comes to companies like Snap. Okay, so let's come back and let's help Tom out here. Snap, I, I actually think it is a good premium uh, opportunity here. Uh, we did get a signal a couple days ago. Uh, I think I, I'd have to look at the intraday chart. Um, let me actually, I'm going to look at the intraday chart to see if that signal got follow through. So we got our signal. I'm going to bounce around here a little bit. On our daily chart, we got a signal on the evening of October 10th. So we'll come over here and again, look at what happened on October 11th. So October 11th would be right here. So some of the basics we would wanna make sure is number one, we're trading above yesterday's close. So if I take a look over here and we look at yesterday's close, we would wanna make sure we're trading above yesterday's close. The other thing we like to do is we like to make sure we're trading above today's open range. And that would be established right there. So what I usually recommend to my traders is that, first of all, you wait until the afternoon or even professional hours. So the afternoon session starts at about 1245 New York, uh, New York time. So that means we would only be trading anytime after that time zone, right? And sometimes, depending on what the schedule of events are, either for that stock or for the um, market in general, we recommend not trading until the last hour. So that would be our professional hour. That would be here. Uh, actually, I'm looking at a 15-minute chart. So that would be from there on, right? So in either case... If we would have done that, you can see that right during professional hour, we started to trade above our price thresholds. And so, yeah, I could see that we would have opened up a position on Snap. That means we would have either bought the stock, bought a back month deep in the money call option, 
Or if we were already in this trade, we would have been selling our protective puts. We would have been buying to close our written calls if they hadn't already expired and going forward. Now let's check out what has happened since. So we've kind of maybe uh, hit and we might be doing a double bottom. Uh, in this case, it looks like we might even be doing a triple bottom. Um, but yeah, I think that this has been a good opportunity to maybe get a small position on Snap that we can then later sell premium on. I know that some people wonder exactly what am I doing? Am I selling credit spreads? You know my thoughts on credit spreads, uh, SIP. They're, they're, they come with a lot of risk. And credit spreads are actually, there's a lot of different kinds of credit spreads. But when people usually ask me about it, they're talking about vertical credit spreads. Um, and also my folks like to put all their trades into retirement accounts, right? And so you can't do credit spreads in retirement accounts because you need a margin account and retirement accounts are cash accounts. So what we're doing is we're legging into diagonal debit spreads. We're legging into covered call, covered put positions. Um, and so this looks like it might be a good opportunity for starting to leg into either a covered call position or a diagonal bull call debit spread. Um, so yeah, I think that you're on to something. Um, and if you got in a couple days ago, that's great. If you didn't, let's see if there's some opportunities going into the new week. And let's just be aware of October 24, because Snap's going to give us another glimpse into their earnings. And it does look like, uh, Snap investors respond to earnings. Just looking at the response here of the sell-off. Uh, after the July 25 earnings, you know, be aware of that. 